So, I don't think we're going to be able to get Daphne to say it because Daphne's a total sweetheart. Oh, I ain't even going to ask Daphne. Yeah, she's Daph, like, Daph would never say She's that. like in prayer groups and stuff. I'm not going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Daphne, you're... I, I need to be in prayer groups. After hearing this conversation, yeah, she's like, <laughs> I need four more prayer groups. <laughs> she's like, I'm, I'm going to pray for you. Yeah, please, <laughs> please do, Daphne. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Daphne. Morning, r- morning Chris and... Good morning, Sabrina. Good morning, Jason. Hello. Daph, uh, before we get into all Hi. the official business with uh, the department and stuff, because I know there's just a ton, I just wanted to uh, catch up with you, you know, on, on the personal side, you know, finding out that the Gov, Lieutenant Gov, uh, you know, COVID positive, and just trying to make sense of all these closures related to the rampant uptick in uh, COVID positive cases. Uh, and I know you're a woman of prayer, so I'm just curious, uh, how are you handling this? Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on all of it? Uh, you know, I mean, I think, uh, of course, it's been very alarming to all of us and, and very concerning. Um, do you know, uh, even prior to the governor and lieutenant governor announcing that they were COVID positive, um, do you know, even in that last week when we start started seeing a surge, it was really concerning me. And uh, my team will tell you, uh, I have been messaging them, calling them um, even since uh, last week because, you know, we've been concerned. We want to make sure, especially for an agency like ours, where we have a lot of people that come in our doors. In vehicle registration, we can have like 600 people, even during a public health emergency, come through our door. So, um, you know, on a personal side, of course, I mean, as Chris knows, um, you know, back in April, um, I started a prayer group and um, it's based on Second Chronicles 714. Um, and it's something like, I, I believe Second Chronicles 714 is, if my people who are called by my name will hear my voice, uh, will call from heaven, well, sorry, we'll hear my voice, my people from, sorry, if my people call, it has to do with basically uh, repentance, I guess. And, and this idea that, you know, as long as we um, repent and, and we're prayerful and we reach out to the Lord that, you know, um, that he is there. And I, I actually believe um, wholeheartedly that, you know, pandemic or no pandemic, that, you know, there is God. And, um, you know, Sabrina and Chris, I've shared perhaps a little bit about my own life and you know, my, my own mom passing um, in 2018 very abruptly. And um, and I shared uh, a while ago that even though I can't necessarily say my mom's death is a blessing, I can say that there's a lot of, uh, you know, it's all about perspective and, and it's about what what we, what meaning we assign to it. And I, uh, I definitely, you know, believe that uh, there are a lot of good things that have happened um, as a result. I've gotten closer to my dad. I've all gotten closer to my family, um, and and so you know, and I've learned to you know do things kind of um, kind of on my own without my mom. So I think that you know, in every uh, there's there's always a blessing about it about things. I think that there's um, you know it's all about perspective, and and I think that you know we could look at this really um, as an opportunity. I know um, you know definitely you know uh, I can't even imagine what those people are going through that have had coronavirus or that have family members, um, you know, I, I do have, uh, I, you know, and so I, I, I feel for them and we pray for them. And the last thing we want is for the continued spread. Um, I believe that the governor has a very difficult decision to make. Um, you know, there's balance. You know, we hear from our doctors that, you know, that it's very serious and we have to take, take extreme precautionary measures so that we make sure that this doesn't continue to spread. Right. And of course there is, you know, the business community and. Um, there are challenges there as well. And, and you know, we see it as well here at Revan Tax. Um, I'll tell you, you know, regardless of what happens, we um, are working to tighten up on our procedures. Mm-hmm. We are working to make sure that we're taking care of our people. Um, and, you know, wh- whatever decision governor decides to make, um, of course, you know, she has her panel of advisory, um, her advisory panel who is, who is standing behind her um, and who is working to make recommendations on both the medical and again, the business side. You know, whatever decision um, falls out of this, you know, we're here to support it the best we can, right. um, you know, and support that it's really the best decision. I, I don't envy her. I, I know that it is a hard decision. I think that, um, you know, we talk about it being unprecedented times and it definitely is and um, definitely very difficult decisions. Um, but, you know, we, we continue to keep doing our best to, to drive forward. And, right. um, you know, Chris, I know I heard you say, I mean, you, you have many friends and, and you know many people who are at this point are really, really um, suffering. They don't have money. It's very challenging times. And, and I, I, you know, we're the same. I mean, you know, we have family, friends that are also challenged, challenged in their businesses, challenged because hours are cut. 
Um, and, you know, and, and of course, that's very important. I mean, taking care of our people, you know, has really been at the forefront of, of our charge at DRT and, um, you know, and, and what we propose to make sure that we do. Um, but, you know, again, the balancing out with the health side, and I am not a doctor, but I can say that, um, you know, the, this COVID-19 situation, um, I really believe is something that we shouldn't take lightly. And, um, you know, I think that it's very important that we listen to our doctors um, and to, um, you know, the people that are uh, that are the experts in that area as well. Right, right. Um, but of course, it's been a very challenging time. I did start a prayer group and I'm very proud to say that our prayer group is still going strong. We've uh, started like I think around April 30 right. and we still twice a day, um, sometimes a little late, do our prayers. We have a weekly prayer and, um, you know, and that's something that's going to continue. And I think, um, you know, I think that through this health emergency, it's important that we you know, I mean, uh, most especially because it's very challenging that we take the time to, you know, meditate, to, you know, really, I think, to work to stay calm. Um, you know, it's easy to to really get stressed. And I think that, you know, taking the time to, um, you know, to, to, to be a little bit calm and to, to try to make decisions in that kind of state is very important. I know right. Guam Behavioral Health has a hotline. I think that, um, you know, it's very important that people know that there are resources like the hotline that they can call into. Right. That's um, like free therapy, are, guys. Uh, under it, a lot of stress. It's free therapy. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, def- you know, that along with list. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead. No, no, sorry. I was going to say that along with listening to Chris and Sabrina in the morning. <laughs> oh, thank you. Wow. You're such a sweet. Now we can't then. ask you any tough questions after that. <laughs> I mean, God. Oh, thanks, Daphne. Yeah, yeah, right. You're the best. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> now, Daph, people, okay. we're getting comments hey. about the renewing the driver's license by mail. This is something uh, new. And now that we, you know, and I value your uh, perspective, guys, pray more. All right, uh, you check it. She's got her prayer group, seven fourteen, based on a Bible verse. Uh, but Daph, let's just go right into the official business part of this call. Mm-hmm. Um, that, and we'll start with renewing the driver's licenses by uh, mail. Absolutely. So, you know, a few weeks ago, I was talking with my team and about, you know, looking at different options for our people. We've been working on Saturdays probably for the last couple of months to try to get people's driver's licenses renewed and to serve our people. And, you know, um, as I was talking with, we have a, a, a relatively new supervisor. I asked him, I said, Art, you know, is there a way that we can um, apply, uh, you know, a mail-in process to what we do? And so we looked at it and we were able to to, to put together a form and so that that way we can um, allow for a couple of things. One, a renewal of a driver's license, a non real ID compliant driver's license, a conversion of an intermediate to full driver's license. And so those are two options that we're going to be um, temporarily allowing um, in kind of it, you know, because of this public health emergency. Um, but Chris and Sabrina, we're working on looking at other areas in driver's license where we will be able to have people, um, you know, receive their documents uh, by mail. Um, another area which we're expecting to be able to launch in the next few weeks is um, also a, a mail out of permits. So, you know, uh, for those, you know, people who have passed the written exam and are just in need of a permit, you know, to be able to get their permits by mail. So we've been looking at all of our processes. We want to make sure that we keep our people safe again, you know, not just our people in our office, but also our community. And we want to give opportunities for those people to, to be able to um, to do things without having to come into our office. So, um, you know, we did announce the other day that we would be doing um, that we would be doing these uh, excuse me, these mail-ins. And so uh, our our team was going to launch the form this late yesterday afternoon, and there was one item they needed to adjust just so that that way they could make sure that there was no confusion um, in the form. So that will be launched today. Um, we'll go ahead and provide that information to our community. But basically what it is, is it's a, a temporary mail-in application for renewals of non real ID compliant driver's licenses or conversions of intermediate to full licenses. It does require that, uh, that you do get, um, you know, you do see your eye doctor. Um, and that's because there has to be safety. I mean, I think, you know, in terms of safety, it's, uh, it's important that, you know, when you're driving, you have, um, you know, good vision and we need to test that. And that's part of our charge as well. And, and responsibility as we issue driver's licenses um, and also requires that you submit passport pictures. So there are documents that you'll have to re, re, uh, attach to your application when you mail it in. 
Um, but, you know, again, uh, we believe that, um, you know, again, this process at least affords our people not just the opportunity to, uh, to it therefore it's our people the opportunity to do things without having to come into our office. Um, we also, I mean, of course, granted, I'm not sure where we're going to be with regards to, um, you know, the, the whether we'll be in PCOR 2 or PCOR 1. As you know, we did open up when we hit PCOR 2 back in May 18 because DRT is considered essential. Um, and so we were one of the agencies that actually did open up um, we opened up a week after PCOR 2 was called. Um, so, you know, I, even if we do go into PCOR 2, we do expect to still be open. Obviously, if we hit PCOR 1, our agency will not be open. And, um, you know, but again, we wait to hear officially from our governor on where that will be. And, and of course, that's going to be based on, you know, and I'm, I'm glad to, you know, see the chamber here. I, I know Christine and I'm, I appreciate her and her, you know, in the business communities, um, you know, sentiment and their concern. Um, you know, I know for sure that the governor will take that into consideration as she works to, to tr really try to balance out and, and make sure that we make the best decision um, in how to move forward. Mm -hmm. uh, Daph, would any of the, uh, uh, any PCOR status change affect like processing tax refunds or, you know, stimulus payments or, or uh, anything else you guys are working on? And then I also wanted to ask about an update on the Mangoffa uh, program, if you could. Sure. Okay. So even during PCOR one, um, actually, when when Governor first called PCOR, when we first called, she called, first shut down the when we first she first issued the executive order to shut down the government back in March. Um, that was a Sunday. I'd like to say it's March 13, 14th, 15th. Um, when that was first issued, of course, um, DRT wasn't open. Uh, was not allowed to open. Um, if, when the CARES Act did pass, we were actually considered, I believe it's called essential limited. Right. And so essential limited meant that our agency we were able to have people come in to work to process. And so even during PCOR 1, when we were, uh, we were in an emergency, that again was the end of March 27th, we were, at the end of March, we were already able to um, activate our team so we could process. So um, I believe that the expectation, and I believe that what we'll end up doing is going to be the same, that even in the midst of PCOR 1, that will likely, and, and that's something, of course, I, 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 if there's no guarantees, but I will be communicating with governor um, on this, um, you know, but, you know, of course, we want to make sure that there are no um, uh, hiccups or any delays in um, terms of making payments to our people, um, whether it's refunds, EIP, right. or even payments on Mangafa. So I expect that we'll continue to be able to uh, at least work, even though we're shut down to the public. That's something that happened during um, this past, uh, during the, even while we were in peak one um, way back in March. Def, uh, we just got a string of questions here. I'm gonna just do, do this uh, rapid uh, fire. Um, if, if you could, if you don't mind. Uh, what if we have an appointment on the 20th for ID renewal? Can they still keep that appointment? As of now, all appointments are, are being kept, right? As of now, yes. Again, um, when we were in PCOR 2, uh, and you know, of course, we'll have to uh, see I, see what falls out of the, um, right, right. the announcement yeah. today. Um, but if we refer back to what happened when we hit PCOR 2 this last time, Revin tax was open. As right. of now, uh, you know, until we uh, provide an official announcement, um, you know, all all of our all of the appointments still stand. Right. Um, but Chris and Sabrina, um, you know, and, and of course to the listening com listening community, I just want to share um, this last public health emergency when we did hit PCOR two and we opened, we recognized that there were so many people who had appointments and who were not able to come in because of the fact that we were shut down. What we did was we, um, you know, we had people contact us. So if you have an appointment, um, so in the event that we end up having to shut down to the public, right. um, but you do have an appointment that's scheduled during that time that we're closed, um, we, you will be prioritized. So, you know, we'll have a, a phone number that you can call so we could re, you could reschedule. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we did in this last time. Again, we recognize, you know, it's not the fault of the, um, of the individual who had an appointment, um, but, you know, because of the situation, um, they were not able to be seen. So, you know, we'll definitely, again, give priority to those people who had appointments and who probably waited a while to get those appointments right. scheduled. Mm -hmm. Where and when, what days can we get intermediate license? Where can we go to get info? Okay, so regarding our services, as we indicated in our, um, 
in our website, I'm sorry, in our media release the other day, um, we, the, we had to change a little bit of our approach and how we're doing things. Um, probably our two highest uh, traffic groups are vehicle registration and driver's license. You know, of course, outside of income tax time, which is, you know, just once a year or a couple times a year. So what happens is, uh, sorry, I, I just, are you, able, are you able to hear me? Yes, I can hear you just fine. Yeah. Uh, Okay, sorry about that. Oh, I, I'm getting a little distracted because I I'm not really sure what I'm looking at. Anyway, so what it is is um uh, what we did is we it had indicated in our media release Monday, Wednesday, Fridays would be the days um, that people could walk in for driver's licenses, and that's for all driver's license services, um, intermediate permits, scheduling. Monday, Wednesday, Fridays from eight to four. Um, eight to nine is for our individuals with disabilities, our Menumpro and our veterans. Mm -hmm. And then nine to uh, nine to four would be for you know the general public. Mm -hmm. um, then Tuesday, Thursdays we would do vehicle registration only. So um, you know in our motor vehicle division, we you know it's funny because our team, for some reason we didn't want to call ourselves DMV, we call ourselves MVD, which is motor vehicle division. Um, so our, our MVD uh, section, we're going to have to be alternating. Um, in terms of services because uh, of, I guess of the sheer number of people that we have and you know again vehicle registration driver's license they're the highest traffic uh, they're the highest traffic in terms of um, you know people coming into our office we have a question here can we renew a disabled placard online um, no disabled placards cannot be renewed online. I know um, at this point there are there is a form though for the disabled placard. But you know that's a great question, and maybe you know as I I actually just so you know Sabrina and Chris, I've really challenged our team to look at the things that we uh, currently offer our services and to identify those areas that we can really move to some type of an online format or even a mail-in format and that's really one of them as well i mean i i don't know i, I will definitely have to get back to um to uh, okay. our supervisor and on that area but um currently we don't have a process for that mm -hmm. for vehicle registration it's purely re renewals of vehicle registrations only okay. that we have online um but again over the last several weeks i have been meeting with my teams and then working to identify those areas that are um that are that we could potentially move towards some type of a format like that. Right. We have one more question. Uh, where is the stimulus money that was garnished for child support? According to the Office of the Attorney General, they have yet to receive that money. Do you have an update on that? Sure, I, I can answer that. In fact, I spoke with uh, I spoke with our um, our uh, Attorney General a few weeks about this, a few weeks ago about this particular issue. And I know it's a huge issue for our people who have gotten garnished, and um, you know, and of course for our our families who depend upon the money that comes from those, um, you know, from those garnishments, and um, you know, uh, and Congress and our president recognized that that was the one item that they wanted to make sure still uh, was with people were that was still going to be able to be garnished because you know we want to make sure that we take care of all of you know of our people and of course um, you know our families, and so. Um, with regards to that, how it works, and just to share, um, you know, Revin Tax, we actually don't manage the funds. We don't have a, a bank account. All of our bank accounts are really managed by the Department of Administration. And so what happens at the DRT side, though, is we will receive from all of the agencies that we do garnishments from, whether it's GMH or whether it's the... Um, um, excuse me, where, whether it's the AG's office, we receive the list of garnishments and then that gets uploaded into our system. And when we cut a check, we cut the check net, meaning that, so for example, if somebody had a, a $1,200 EIP payment due to them, but they owed $100 in child support, we would just basically cut the check a net of the 100, so they would get 1,100 and then the 100 would be um, um, left in in the uh, bank account and then that money is, gets transmitted from the Department of Administration to the AG's office and I know um, you know again I've, I've talked with the AG about this and about the process um, on a regular basis each time that we process refunds or we process EIP we we transmit the list of those individuals whose payments were garnished to the AG's office so that they are aware um, and then you know of course 
Um, in terms, again, of the process for transferring of the payments, that's something that's outside of the scope of, right. of, of yeah. DRT. I but I know that our Department of Administration <laughs> has worked closely with uh, with the AG's office based on my discussion with our AG. Okay. okay. Well, we th well, thank thanks, Daphne, yeah. for, for all of the updates. Whenever you come on, um, our live stream just really blows up because yeah. people have so many questions for your agency and so maybe hopefully somebody can come on and, um, and just answer some of these questions because there's there's quite a few right. but we thank you so much for your time this morning stay safe yeah def uh yeah i mean i know you got if you wanted to get maybe a staff to look over some of the comments and then shoot me a message if, if you have time <coughs> if not yeah. we'll bring you on next week because i'm pretty sure obviously people are gonna have even more questions after we get something concrete from uh, the governor today yeah. thank thank you def sure but would you mind if I just if I just quoted Second Chronicles seven fourteen because I felt really bad I didn't do it properly earlier, mm -hmm. but basically two Chronicles seven fourteen is if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. And so you know throughout this whole thing, Chris, you know I, I've been a real advocate for prayer. Um, you know of course uh, uh, you know and. I, I believe that it's so important, you know, that we pray for each other. We pray for our governor, our lieutenant governor, and the hard decisions that they have to make, and also for our entire island and our business community and all of our people, you know, most especially those people who, um, you know, are in dire need. And so, um, you know, I want to thank you for all that you do. I want to thank you for letting me get on. And um, you know what? I'll I'll try to have somebody look at all the comments yeah, so we can yeah. try to get all these answers back to you. Thank you. Um, I want to thank the people of Guam for being so supportive of us. Have a great day, Chris. Thank you, Daphne. Serena. Bye. Have a great day. Be Agamos. safe. Wash your hands. Be safe. Okay. All right. Will do. All right. There you go. <laughs> She's awesome. Daphne uh, Shimizu, uh, Department of Revenue uh, Tax. Let's keep it in the Zoom room uh, and get uh, Police Spokesman Sergeant Paul Tapao on the link. The Breeze 93.9. Good morning, Sarge.